आदर्श जया सुषमा बिदु वेलकम टू द सिक्स्थ फोर्टी नाइन मीटिंग ऑफ स्पीच वीवर स्टोर्स मास्टर्स क्लब बैंगलोरु I believe in Kulapka. Welcome each one of you to our enchanting club meeting. Toastmasters Club's mission is to provide supportive, positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Toastmasters have helped people from diverse background to become more confident communicator and leader. I request you all to uphold the cardinal principle of every. Keep your audio microphone muted at all times, except when you are invited to speak. Keep your video on at all times. Unless you are moving in and out of the room, as a speaker and speaker, make sure to applaud them virtually. Role takers and speakers are consciously refraining from expressing their views on sex, politics, and religion to ensure the sentiments of audience are not hurt. Now it's my pleasure to welcome my club president, Speech Viewers Toastmasters Club. Weaves speeches and they keep on dishing out fantastic speeches week after week. And here is a president, because civil engineer experience in Saudi Arabia for more than thirty years. Developed dams and everything, you name it. But he's also he knows how to stitch. Do you know he has stitched all his kids and granddaughters and grandsons' school uniform? When he told me, I took it by a pinch of salt. But then he himself volunteered to give us a frame cover. A curtain for our yoga class because we had certain photographs. He wanted to cover them properly, and here's a man who came next day with satin stitches, and he made a fantastic covers for each of those flames over there. So that is our president for the day, the president of our club, Toastmaster Joseph. Over to you. Good evening, Toastmasters and distinguished guests. I hope everybody is doing well in this pandemic. You have to follow the SOP and wear N95 masks, and which is mandatory. I hope everybody is doing well. I declare. The Toastmaster 649 meeting in order. Ladies and gentlemen, our country is witnessing a high, phenomenal high growth rate in COVID-19. Cases with the 300 districts recording 5% weekly positive rate. The surge is also evident as more states are. Reporting high load of cases. Endorsing the World Health Organization, warning health officials in India urge people not to become complacent and treat Omicron infection as common cold. At present, 19 states have more than 10,000. Active cases. It is sad and painful to me. Our Toastmasters' children and their families are 
subjected to COVID positive of late. It is so sad for me. At the same time, I'm very happy that Bidu, who was having COVID positive, is now today in our meeting. It's a great thing for me. Vinu Karthik is family. And other members of the family are also sick. One of our visitors, Neelu's children are sick. So today, it is, I announce everybody to take care of your health and be careful in these days. Today, I would like to announce few things to facilitate our Toastmasters for continuous participation in completing the pathways in involving our easy access to nominate themselves with their own initiative. The actual sheets for the pathways as well as for the role players have been made by our VP. For three weeks, our Toastmasters can fill that on their own because they will have an access and see that they follow the, the role that they have been asked to go for. And also they speak on the pathway, which is given to you according to your request in the Excel sheet. So these Excel sheets are accessible to each and every one of you. What I would suggest is that continuous presence is solicited from our entire speech viewers club Toastmasters to practice and learn public speaking as well as communication skills for which the platform is dedicated. Therefore, we are committed to serve our members with wholeheartedly and diligently to accomplish their goals. Very soon, we will allocate mentors one in one, more so to help the members in their educational learning, imparting greater knowledge to each and every one. I will initiate some motivated awards to our members to come up with their success. There are awards that will be formulated from the club itself as per the norms and also the direct rate, as well as from the Toastmasters International, which will be definitely given as and when the member reaches that stage of competency and educational award. My only appeal to the members is strive hard uh, for the investment you have made for your educational program. Make avail of the opportunity given to you at your doorstep, at the convenience of your drawing room, which is possible in this networking system, and improve your career as well as the company for you are working for. I hope my message is very clear to my beloved Toastmasters. Now it is time for me to introduce our joke master. She is our past president who has accomplished several awards during a journey. Please join in welcoming Deepa Sampat Kumar. Over to you, Deepa Sampat Kumar. Good evening, and I think good morning to some of you here in the club. Are you all ready for some laughs? Yeah? All right, let me go for joke number one. You know, one day I was in a library. I was about to take my books back home when suddenly a man came running. And I looked at him and then he went to the library and he asked, ma'am, I'm very hungry. I need two dosas, one idli, cup of chutney and a cup of sambar. The librarian was not amused, she said. Sir, do you realize you're in a library? And the man then goes, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Ma'am, I need two dosas, 
one idli, a cup of sambar, and a cup of chutney. Next joke. You know, I have a very needy friend. I hadn't met her for maybe two weeks and then she calls me up. No, she texts me actually. And she says she's fallen from a 20 feet ladder and she's in great pain. I was very, uh, I got very shocked and I immediately left all my work and I went to her place. I thought she would be in fractures wrapped in some bandaid or writhing in pain. And she says, Deepa, finally you're here. And I asked, Mullen, what's wrong with you? Nothing has happened. Well, how did you fall and how did you, how are you still intact? She says, she says, Deepa, I fell from the first step of the 20 feet ladder, but I'm still in a lot of pain though, because you hadn't met me for two weeks. The next one. A teenager brings her new boyfriend home to meet her parents. And then the parents are like appalled. The guy is having a weird haircut. He has tattoos all over his body, piercings. The mom goes to her daughter and says, dear, he doesn't look like a nice boy. And then, oh, mom, please. Who would do 500 hours of community service if they were not nice? That's it from the joke master over to the president, Joseph. Thank you so much. A big applause to Deepa. It's a wonderful joke. We enjoyed it. Now it is time for me to introduce a person who is in our midst, a dynamic personality, who recently taught, fought with the COVID virus and victoriously came out with that. He's a sports management professional. Looking at the corporate affairs in Balchung Booth of Football Schools, a marathon runner, and enjoys trips with friends. Please join hands in welcoming the Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Bidu. Over to you, Toastmaster Bidu. Thank you so much, President Toastmasters Joseph. When you are asked to just isolate and do nothing when you're fighting COVID, the term victorious does sound a little bit odd for me. Anyways, greetings Toastmasters and guests. What are your initial thoughts when you hear the word, the first step? Is it the first steps of a baby taking his initial walk? Or is it the first step you mastered that your dance instructor taught you in your Zumba sessions? Is it the famous first step on moon which led Neil Armstrong to utter the famous words, that's a small step for man, one giant leap for mankind? Or the first step outside your home, post lockdown, quarantine or isolation? Terms quite synonymous to our everyday conversation in the last two years. Is there any guesses of the term first step from your side? I did hear first step from Toastmasters Deepa who said her friend fell from the first step. Any other guesses what first step could be? Okay. Well, the first steps that I mentioned, I would definitely like to speak about them all because they are all special first steps. But today, the context within which I'm speaking about the first step is my first step in Toastmasters. As we entered the fresh new year, like most people, I was also reminiscing about the activities, the routine that I adhered to in all of 2021 and which of those activities I would like to choose to continue to do in 2022. Toastmasters is definitely one of the top activities that I would like to pursue going forward. So how did it all start? How did I take my first step? Well, here's the short description. It was in 2018 and I was in my first year of corporate life. I was working in a startup and majority of my time I was spending was by giving pitches. Either I had to pitch our company to investors 
or I had to pitch a product to our customers. I realized I needed to fine tune my professional speaking skills. I kept exploring avenues until I was invited to a speech we was meeting to participate as a guest. And with the kind of reception that I received that day, I was in no way going to let go of that opportunity. Till today, the quest to self-improve has led me to continue being associated with this club because as they say, the real fruits of labor, you only get to see when you have persevered long enough. Now, why is this crucial? Of course, for me, it has a lot of benefits. But what it is there for you? Why would you take interest in, such, in this anecdote of me? Well, here's why. While all these events were occurring, I was definitely unmindful. But when I look back in the hindsight, I observe a clear pattern. A pattern of neat identification, exploration, taking the opportunity, and then persisting long enough. Toastmasters and guests, I am sure many of you must have goals for this new year. Some of you might want to achieve something that will require you to enter a territory that is unexplored. You might get the feeling of anxiety at first, but I'm sure if you are mindful of the steps, need identification, exploration, opportunity, and persistence, you would definitely be able to get rid of the first hurdle and take that first step. With this thought, I would like to take the first step into today's meeting. I would like to proceed by thanking the guests who have joined us on this wonderful Friday. For the benefit of guests, I would like to tell a brief about Toastmasters. Toastmasters is an international organization which was founded in 1924. It has been over 100 years and we have right now over 3,65,000 members. We belong to District 92 and our club is Speech Weavers. Every Toastmasters meeting has three sections. The first one is prepared speech section, where each member comes up with a prepared speech based on the level and the project that he or she is attempting. The next session is a table topic session, where we exercise impromptu speeches. And the final session is a general evaluation section where every role taker, including me, is evaluated by a round of evaluators. Moving on, I would like to introduce one vital person for today's meeting, our general evaluator. Our general evaluator for today is a Toastmasters for over a little one year since September 2020. He is the president of the Gabby's Toastmasters Club Bangalore and he is the VP Education of Rising Speakers Toastmasters Club Bangalore. He has served as an area director for area B3, District 92, and he is also a winner of three Pathbreaker Awards, Outstanding Toastmaster and Grand Slam Master Mentor Award from District 92. So a very, very reputed person. When I asked him about his first step towards Toastmasters and what his fond memories are, here's what he replied. The first day he had a demo meeting at the Gabby's Toastmasters Club and that meeting was literally a comedy of errors. But looking back, he is really proud of that club, the Gabby's Toastmasters Club. Requesting our general evaluator, Toastmaster Saurav Dutta, to inform us about the evaluation and the evaluators. Over to you, Toastmaster Saurav. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Bidhu. And um, I'm so happy to be, black, to be back at the Speech Beavers Toastmasters Club. I think this is after ages, uh, after months at least. And um, this club is very special to me because a lot of our learnings, a lot of the things that we have implemented at the Gabby's and rest everywhere else across this, uh, across my area, a lot of things I've learned from this club. Uh, DTM Millen, Deepa, they have been fantastic Toastmasters who have actually guided me in, in getting started in my Toastmasters journey. So as a general evaluator today, my role is um, that of a friend who tells you um, what went well, what could have been better, uh, what are some of the things that you could have done differently. And um, for a club like Speech Weavers, for doing this over one and a half hours, I need a team to help me with that. And today I have with me a team of a timer, accounter, grammarian, and listener. The timer for today is our club VP Education, the Speech Weavers VP Education, Toastmaster Adars Krishna. Toastmaster Adars Krishna, can you please explain your role and also the timing protocols? Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Saurav. Thank you very much for dropping by. 
and I will be playing the role of a timer today. So the dictionary defines time as something that you plan, schedule, or arrange as to when it has to happen or to be done. And that's exactly what I'm going to do as a timer. It's my job to ensure that you're on time. And we have a couple of speeches lined up today. Both speeches are going to be for five to seven minutes. And let me tell you how I'm going to time that. So at five minutes, I'll raise the green card, as you can see. At six minutes, I will raise the yellow card. And finally, when you reach the seventh minute, I will raise the red card, which means you're supposed to stop. For evaluations, you'll have two to three minutes. And the drill is pretty much the same. I'll raise, I'll raise the green card when you reach the second minute. I'll raise the yellow card when you reach two minutes and 30 seconds. And finally, when you reach the third minute, which is the final minute, I will raise the red card, which is a symbol that you're supposed to stop. As for the table topics, the drill is pretty much the same, but the timing is slightly different. The timing is two minutes and 30 seconds. So you'll have two minutes to speak and the 30 seconds is the grace period. And I'll tell you how I'm gonna time you exactly. When you reach the second minute, I will raise, I'm sorry, when you reach the first minute, I'll raise the green card. When you reach one minute and 30 seconds, I will raise the yellow card. And finally, when you reach two minutes, I will raise the red card, which again is a symbol that you're supposed to stop. You'll be awarded, as I said, 30 seconds to finish your speech. And on that note, I'd like to hand it back to us, general evaluator Saurav. I'll be presenting my report towards the end of the Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Adarsh. Let me now invite uh, another VP education of another club, the Gabby's Toastmasters Club, Toastmaster Akanksha Shivastav, who is playing the dual role of the R counter and the listener. So, Toastmaster Akanksha, you may want to explain both the roles uh, as you take the stage now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, G. Sora. Greetings, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. The purpose, first I'll explain the R counter role. And the purpose of the R counter is to note words and sounds that are used as crutch or pause filler by anyone who speaks. I will also note when a speaker repeats a word or phrase such as I, I, or this means, this means. At the end of the meeting, I will report the number of times that each speaker used these expressions. Now, I have a small tip for the speakers today. Watch out for two crutch word hotspots. These are at the beginning of the statement and in between the ideas. Be mindful of these. Mm, avoid verbal thinking like I just did. Instead, pause, think, and speak. Now, over to my listener role. As a listener, I will be note noting interesting tidbits of information from any of the speakers, and I will ask questions near the end of the meeting to see if everyone was paying attention. And I'll be presenting my report when called upon by the GE, Toastmaster Saurav. Over to you, GE. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Akansha. And finally, the most erudite member of my tag team, of my taggle team, Toastmaster Brian Edwards as the grammarian. Toastmaster Brian, if you can please explain your role. Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmasters, as the grammarian, I will be looking out for three main sort of things. One is called pronunciation. The other one is called enunciation. And the other one is called diction. Pronunciation is how you pronounce your words. In certain languages, letters like the letter R or the letter T is emphasized. If you want to be a good English speaker, certain words have soft meanings. So bear in mind, when you're speaking English, try to ease off on your very strong native accent. The other one is called diction. That is the sounds that you make when you emphasize a word or a sentence. Open your mouth. Use your lips to pronounce a particular word. Emphasize it. 
The other one is enunciation. It's how you mention the words, how you clearly mention the syllables within a word. Bear in mind, using words with long alphabets doesn't impress anybody as a speaker. You're not acting on a stage. You're delivering a speech that's got to have a meaning. So these are the sort of things I will be looking for as a grammarian. And I will also point out the good sentences that you use. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Brian. Would you also want to introduce the word of the day for today's meeting? Yes, the word of the day today is humility. I've chosen this word because a lot of people feel that if they are using big words or long words, that they are sort of impressing people. Humility is being mindful of your own, if you like, importance. Try not to be the opposite of humility is arrogance, full of your own ego. When you're giving a speech, use simple sentences to get the message across. Modestly be modest. Don't also be portraying false humility. False humility is disguising your pridefulness. Try to avoid that. Because if we sort of try to condemn ourselves too much, we are falsely being humble. So humility, try to use that as much as you can. Try to be moderate in your display, in the words and the sentences. Thank you. Back to you, Toastmaster, today. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Brian. So that was my Taggle team. And um, I think one of the best explanations uh, that we got from the grammarian on humility, I think we have talked about humility. We have, we have always watched out for humility in how we express ourselves uh, in our persona and attitude. But I think this is the first time that I'm hearing, and rightly so, about humility in your language. Because sometimes when we use words which we know that 99 percent of people around us don't understand it is not to educate anyone it is not to spread the love of english it is just to humiliate others and make them feel you know what you need to go back to school so thank you so much for highlighting this uh, toastmaster brian a very important lesson for all the toastmasters humility is the word of the day uh, toastmasters and let's get started and back to the toastmaster of the day Thank you, General Evaluator and your team. With this elaborate guidelines in place, let's move on to the first segment of today's meeting, the prepared speech segment. Our first speaker today is trying Pathway Presentation Mastery, Level 1, Project 3. To evaluate the speech, we have Evaluator Toastmaster Shushma. May I request Toastmaster Shushma to read out the project guidelines for our first speaker? Over to you, Toastmaster Shushma. Thank you, Toastmaster Bidu. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. My tar target speaker is delivering uh, from level one, project three, researching and presentation. The purpose of the project is for the member to learn or review basic research methods and present a well-organized, well-researched speech on any topic. I wish him all the best. Over to you, Toastmaster Bidu. Thank you. Our speaker is a chartered accountancy student and an MBA aspirant. When not into academics, he participates in sports, primarily badminton. Without further ado, I invite Toastmasters Nitin. Technology that is going to change our lives. Technology that is going to change our lives. Toastmasters Nitin. Did any of you ever thought that we'll be sitting on in his computer screen talking to each other way back 10 years who are there no but today we are only a click away from our meetings online in a virtual platform but way back these are connected offline as far as i know and let's go back to at least 10 years where many had an opinion that it is not possible to meet online anytime we would wish to and going further back there was an opinion Seeing someone virtually is a myth that is not at all possible. So thanks to all the virtual technology and artificial intelligence, 
which made it possible for us to connect any time from any place, maybe from the next street or even from the next country you stay. So hello and good evening to all the Toastmasters and guests. I am here to take you furthermore into our future and talk about a few technologies that are going to become a part, a part in our lives, which are a myth to many people nowadays. And many are working a lot further. For people living in Bangalore or any metropolitan cities, etc., for you, airports are nearby. But for kids or any other persons living in cities as like I live, we doesn't have an airport. So for us, for us to fly, we have to go way back to a metropolitan city, get the flight, and for that, it is a one-day process. And even for the people who live in a metropolitan city or having an airport, they have to go an hour before the flight and catch it. But it is because of the Wright brothers who saw birds fly and thought we can fly. So thank you for them. And what I'm going to tell is, previously it was only to the rich category who you, you who can afford to fly. But now the economy class have come emerged and everyone can fly. Have you ever thought that you can fly to your neighborhood in your own vehicle. This is what is going to be changing. This is one of the things while I'm researching caught my interest where Japan and Korea is developing flying cars. We have to accept it. Not only birds, but we can fly. We can fly in our own vehicles as we are taking our cars and bikes to our neighborhood, to our parties, to the school and our school buses may fly in future generation. And let it be, in the 80s, can anyone think we had a color Xerox because it was only a printing machine or the typewriter as someone of you knows. But today we are having color Xeroxes. And in 2020, the most revolutionary thing that came out way back, but got its uh, impress, impression in 2020 and started its, is 3D printing. So. No one ever thought that we can print any object, right? In the same way, it got evolved. And this is not the point of research that attracted me. The point which attracted me the most is we can print our foot and even our body organs. Can you believe when our mom's not in home, we can prepare our own food? Not prepare. We can print our own food. And it is that there are many people dying of heart diseases and lung cancers where they are not getting a replaceable heart. But in future generations, we can print our own heart. We can print our own lungs. So it will be a medical revolutionary. And also NASA is now searching and researching on 3D printers for food, where astronauts can use it in space. And one printer is already sent to space in 2021, July 18th. Coming back to it. OK, let's say. We are a lot very advanced for anyone present now. But even video calls was a lot very advanced for people present way back in the 80s or the 90s, right? So human inventions for humankind are so advancement for humans is something that it takes time, but not something which is not possible. Everything is possible once a human thing. So that day where everyone in our virtual world, it will be there. What I'm talking about is virtual world of humankind, where we will stay in VRs, having VRs in a virtual life. We will earn there, we will eat our food, we will stay, everything, which is now called Metaverse by Facebook. You know, there are many people nowadays using this. The recent example is from Tamil Nadu, where they are conducting their reception in Metaverse. They have sent invitations in Metaverse and we can attend them in Metaverse. Metaverse is a virtual flat platform where we can join, create avatars, and even get to each other. So let me think. This may be the final but most interesting topic, which is robots. We all know robots is a revolutionary thing. We all are dependent on robots. What I mean by dependent is washing machine is a robot, television is a robot, and your mobile or your screen or your laptop is also a robot. But these are manual robots. We have to function them. There are going to be automated robots. I meant for households. Robots are what we use. If we use robots for good use, they are going to be a revolution. Or if we use the robots for bad use, they are going to be an extinction for the humankind. 
And finally, what I say is, there is also a chance for immortality with the use of technology. What I meant is, what human is our memories. And we can store our memories. Those memories recreate memories. And them, those recreate memories. So we can have immortality with the technology. So let's believe in technology. And let's not criticize the people who believe in technology. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmasters Nitin. If anyone predicted 20, 30 years back that technology will be so pervasive, affordable, and irreplaceable, uh, it would never be perceived as a prediction made in humility because it was really, really far-fetched. But hearing your thoughts, I definitely am looking forward to what technology has for us in store going forward in future, be it the metaverse. Moving on to our next speaker, our second speaker is attempting Pathways Effective Coaching Level 3, Project 1. To evaluate her speech, we have one of the veteran speakers of Toastmasters, who is Toastmasters Deepa. And mind you, she is a legend in impromptu speaking as well. May I request Toastmasters Deepa to read our third, second speaker's evaluation guidelines. Toastmasters Deepa. Thank you, Toastmasters the day, Bidu. And here is the evaluation guidelines given to me. Our speaker number two is trying out her project, Connect with Storytelling. And the purpose statement of her project reads that she has to practice using a story within a speech or giving a speech that is a story. The story could be personal, it could be a well-known fiction of, or something of her own creation. Time of please note, time is five to seven minutes. Over to the Toastmaster today. Thank you. Our speaker today is an educator by choice and not by chance. She is a strong believer of the term Kaizen, which, in, which is a Japanese term meaning continuous improvement. With this, I would like to invite Toastmasters Jaya, Bits and Beyond, Bits and Beyond, Toastmasters Jaya. Rain, rain, go away. Come again on another day. Rohan and Saina wants to play. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. On a cold, rainy evening, Tanvi sat with a cup of tea, deep in her thoughts, as the petrichor wafted through the window. It was on the same day, one of her students, Rohan, came to her with math phobia. He expressed, the moment he thinks of numbers, he gets blacked out. His voice shivered and then we could make out how the child seems to be so helpless. It was the same day Saina approached her with math magic. The moment she thinks numbers, she feels happy. She understands the world through numbers. Parallel paradoxes. Two students, two extremes, two families, but one teacher, same teacher. With the last sip of tea, Tanvi started revisiting her journey as an educator with debate and declamation running in her mind. What went well? What could have been done differently? Journey of Tanvi being a math educator started a few years ago. One thing she noticed throughout her teaching journey, mathematics was mostly considered as not so easy subject but by so many of us. Is there anyone among the audience who also think the same way? I bet there may be one or two. And no wonder our beliefs and values are passed on to generation after generation. She decided to make the subject more interesting with her fresh ideas. After all, ideas are contagious. And an idea can change your life. Tagline of one of the telecom company. Next morning, as Tanvi was driving down to school, she was so excited to have 
planned something different with her good friend janvi to force students think out of the box well this and turns spice up everyone's life janvi and tanvi entered the school in colorful costumes students were enthralled as they were thinking something different is going to happen and they were not knowing what is going to be in their tables today an announcement came good morning students all of you are going to experience number sense today the day went by with number dance number song number art to name a few next four days were similar to it number sense pattern sense measuring sense data sense after 10 days rohan came up with a mini project collating his learning his joy knew no bounds as his classmates and the teachers appreciated his work one month later tanvi and her students put up ganit utsav that's nothing other than festival of math it was a carnival where students were chefs shopkeepers singers dancers organizers for games and puzzles each stall depicted concepts through experiential learning rohan could understand so many concepts in simpler method and he was able to change the mindset of him being so much fearful about the subject and he went ahead ahead to further explore and investigate he came up with his own explanation he says mathematics has lifestyle its own culture culture to count culture to progress that's nothing but measurement culture to connect that's patterns and functions culture to build that's shapes and space geometry culture to save data handling saina on the other hand started connecting mathematical concepts with other subjects like patterns in music patterns in movement patterns in art dear toastmasters tanvi in myself sips a cup of tea looking outside waiting for petrikor yet again wafting through the window he is bound to think bits and beyond as long as history has got geography in it and geography has got history in it twists will definitely have turns and turns will definitely have twists this is where i am in place and time right now in my journey to go bits and beyond how about you 100 years from now it will not matter what my bank account was what kind of house i lived in what kind of car i drove what kind of dress i wore world will be certainly different it will be better than today because i've made difference in the life of a child thank you thank you so much toastmasters jaya for this wonderful topic now let's move on to our second segment in this meeting the table topics and to take you through that i invite our table topic master toastmasters melin i can see toastmasters melin waiting patiently trying to tweak the topics that he prepared and to capture our attention in this entertaining segment i am very eager to hear the topics and so do others toastmasters melin the stage is yours
Josh Masters Mirin, your screen is visible. Uh, may I request you to unmute if you are speaking something? Josh Masters, table topicers, table topic is an opportunity for you, as the Toast Master said, to speak impromptu. And that is one skill one has to learn and develop. And we have some masters over here. We have grandmasters who can even help you out. And what is, why it is so important? Because there are times, especially when you're at Lizzle, or when you're in the lift, in the elevator, you meet your boss, or you, you meet the CEO, and then you have an opportunity to speak to him or her. And then you fumble. You don't know what to speak. When the lift gate opens, you walk off, she walks off, or he walks off, and then you think, oh my God, I could have told her this. I could have told him this. And that is a challenge. And here is Toastmasters for you, which gives you that opportunity. I stay in Bangalore, and many of you are from Bangalore. Bangalore has one challenge. There was a newspaper article which I read in 2017 that the garbage problem of Bangalore has increased leaps and bound. And instead of being a gar garden city, now from since 2012, it has been called as a garbage city. The garbage quantity has been increasing from a very small quantity of 2,000 tons, 200 tons per day in 2000, 2001, 2000. In 2015, it increased by 17 times. And currently, it has increased by more than 22 times. So this is an issue which the city of Bangalore, the IT capital, the startup capital, the most modern city of Asia, not only India, is grappling with. And there are many challenges. The local municipal authorities try to come with some various solutions, or they do, they correct it and put it in the neighboring areas, which is called as landfill. After some time, that landfill gets filled. All the locals over there, the farmers, they protest that they have to move. And this has been going up like a merry-go-round, like a musical chair. And one point which I noticed in this particular article was, is a concern of consumerism, which is one of the major cause, because it seems Bangalore has garbage quantity is the highest in the country, except for New Delhi. So this is something which has been happening. So I don't want to bore you with these news items, but this is a regular, every week or every second week, you come across some news headlines, principal corporation coming with this session, but we know whatever they do is inadequate. And after some time, they also admit it's an intractable issue, cannot be resolved, that's what they say. So I came to know there's one major talk going on coming Sunday. The talk is on reduce, re reuse, and replace. That is the way to go forward to control garbage. But all these three words, those three R's, reduce, re -re reuse, and recycle are Greek and Latin to me. So I am requesting the volunteers over here, if they can throw some light, because those organizers told me, those who can give their views, they'll be given a free pass for the Sunday Zoom event. So I need volunteers who can focus on the problem of my city or maybe many of you, our city. And they say the only way to reduce garbage is to reduce Recycle, reuse, and recycle. So, may I request our own Toastmaster from our own club, Toastmaster Abhilash, 
to say a few words or we can open the inning of this table topic. What do you think can be the way out forward? Abhilash, over to you. You can unmute your yes, 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 sir. Thank you. So, uh, from Kela, so he used to travel all over the countries almost. Past 30 years, he visited almost 150 plus countries, and he just used to uh, post in a separate channel. He's channel. Just one minute, just one minute. Yeah, just a minute. I'm connecting a different uh, network. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, loud and clear. Go ahead. Audible? You can pick up. Yeah, you can pick up any of the three hours. Okay. Reduce, reuse, recycle, or all the three choices yours. Okay. So I I I choose this reduce. Okay. Thank you, Toastmaster Melinda, uh, and all my. Uh, other Toastmasters, my old mates, the presenting office, especially Joseph sir. <laughs> okay, fine. So uh, very recently, I've, I've gone through a video where uh, one of the guys from Kerala who posted, he's running his own channel and he's the one who traveled all over the world, almost 150 plus countries. And he was comparing the infrastructure or the waste management they have. I mean, the other countries have and what we have. I mean, currently in India, he was specifically talking about Kerala, uh, we, he said like, we have to start from our house, not simply seeing a garbage or uh, some drainage and say, see, government is noting on what we are doing in our house. Even in right now, I'm sitting in a room, still I have to clean something, but I have to do that. So uh, we, we, we are, we have to reduce it actually. It's not like, see, we have, we know that we have to reuse, we have to reduce, we have to recycle all these things, but what we can do, we have to reduce it first. So uh, instead of just uh, simply, if you want to buy something, why would you simply uh, get a cover, plastic cover from the shop? You can take your own cover, right? That must be a biodegradable. How many of us are doing? I don't know how many of us are doing. Even I've seen many people who are simply uh, even these days are mostly parcel service. We can't even get the food directly. I mean, you can't even directly have because of the current lockdown situations and all. So if you go out and get a food, take your own vessel, right? You can save a small packet, plastic cover, which you are going to throw in your dustbin. So that, that's what I think uh, reduce. So reduce the max of unwanted plastic and uh, no, from it has to start from your house, actually. Then it has to go to society. If you simply come on society, 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 no, it's about you, not society. So wherever I see a garbage, I can see a human mind with their wrong attitude, not a garbage. Thank you. Or to you, Toastmaster Melinda. Thank you, Abhilash, for this point that you should start at your home. As they say, the charity begins at home. If you reduce the consumption of or create generation of garbage at home, there are ways and means. And that will really, and you give a real life example, what happens in Kerala in your hometown, that's great. So kudos to you, Abhilash. Now, who is the next volunteer? So may I request our next volunteer from Del Shukti Hi. to come across. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, sir. Is it, is it for me? Is I'm Selva yeah, Kumar? Yeah, Selva Kumar, yeah, Selva hey, Kumar, yeah. Hey, uh, oh, thanks, thanks uh, everyone, and thanks every Toastmasters here. It is a wonderful topic. I was, again, this is my first speech. Please forgive me anything wrong. Yeah, so, yeah, so the, the wonderful topic, the face management, right? So uh, I uh, really, you know, yeah, Bangalore, uh, if you say an example, I would consider, you know, whole India itself, how the waste management. Uh, so instead of, you know, we, can reduce it, yes, but how many persons know how to reduce it? That that is an, that is something I'm maybe you not know, skeptical again, uh, maybe slightly against on it. So we can't you know force the people to reduce it because uh, the people are luxurious, and then you know if you see the population increasing, technology increasing, and also electronic waste, everything increasing right now. Everything going towards direction of increasing, 
there is a chance of reducing is something it, it's a little bit far yes it is a good point what we have to do is we have to make the segregations so there is a dry waste and then you know wet waste so those segregations should from start immediately but but you know there is a good graduate or i could say thanks for bangalore compared because basically i'm from you know uh, tamil nadu but while i'm seeing this bangalore very strict on the waste management while in, i'm being in apartment if i'm not segregating my waste the dustbin over collects they will not collect the you no know, dustbin there is a, you know they compulsory they will they will you know, next day my association will say hey this is a number is not segregated we we got to know that so that's much systematically few of the you know well managed society they are doing that so this is a something good initiation i can see in a bangalore example for country i can say and the second thing what i what i want to improve is this is a something we should come from the school stage or in a school lessons actually from first standard second standard it has to become in a bond kind of thing then this is a way we can make a society very clean if you say in against you know if you say in singapore it's a country of small country you see the population is for the management how they are managing the waste they are not reducing they are still you know increasing so we have to go segregate and manage it um, and thanks for that um uh, thank thanks for mata yeah <laughs> speech thank you sarva kumar for highlighting this waste segregation that's also extremely important especially for the waste processor if they get segregated waste their job becomes much more easier they have different processes of compost wet waste dry waste sanitary waste rejects medical biomedical waste so this segregation is a long way which would help the of a municipal corporation and the waste processor that's a fantastic session which you gave of course you thought you had a concern how can we reduce in this commercial consumerism thing but you also gave a solution so kudos to you and you said it's your first speech so kudos to you to take that first step that's our theme of the day so that also you made sure you gave the debut at our club thank you now may i request the master extempore speaker deepa to give her views on the videos reuse recycle who are to deepa thank you table topics master for today and uh, yes i've been seeing bangalore for so many years and it's indeed disheartening to see garbage patches everywhere and i believe that um for us we have to use all three of them they don't say the three r's and tell us to use only one r but i think we have to use all of them with recycling i think it's we have certain limitations to recycling and i would say definitely go for the first thing the first r should be reduce and then only you should think of recycling i mean uh, it shouldn't be an attitude of okay i'm going to buy this but i'm going to re i'm going to make sure it goes to the right recycle bin so it is better if we can do with our needs rather than our wants because we've we've seen in the consumer society that's just mushrooming in bangalore just, just like in the west and everybody wants to have n number of things though they don't even use it and at the end of the day just throw it for example clothing itself the number of clothes that each person has um, and they there are not enough mechanisms to recycle them and they all go into developing polythene bags which again there is no end um, sustainable end to that product so i would say uh, as a citizen of bangalore we must aim at showing that we are a world class citizen that we are we are such a metropolis we are capable of in, uh, collective intelligence and i think if we have a brilliant leader it would be very nice if there is a mechanism to stop the garbage mafia which is which you rightly mentioned uh dtm milin that there is a section which wants a lot of garbage so that they make a lot of money if that these um these people who eat away the soul of the city are checked in their places i think we will grow as bangalore has always shown the path to growth i think we can show once again that this challenge is not no not a big challenge it's a challenge that we can always beat and be successful at and be an example for the world as well thank you deepa 
you being a true Bangalorean, you know the pains and the suffering of your city, the garden city, which is from 2012, it has been christened as the garbage city, and that's tax even in 2022 is still there. So let us get some international flavor on the same garbage issue. So may I request Chin to give her view if she is okay with this. Are you, are you aware of the background which I gave today for the team? It was mainly my city, Bangalore, is having a perennial problem of garbage getting dumped and the municipal corporations are not able to handle it. We come with some measures, but again, garbage keeps on piling up. So uh, you know, from China or from other cities. Time, I have to interject. Uh, uh, guess Shin will not be able to join because she is in office. So you have to just uh, ask someone else. Okay, fine, fine, fine. So then who can volunteer now? Is it Brian, the grammarian? He can give some ideas. We we'll talk about diction and pronunciation. So he can talk. Okay, you. Okay, table topic master. Thank you very much for asking me this question. When I was studying in Bangalore many, many years ago, long before some of you were born, I'm sure. In those days, Bangalore used to be referred to as the Garden City. It was a beautiful city. I enjoyed it. I studied on Museum Road at St. Joseph's European High School in those days. Now, I recall in those days, even at school, we had priests teaching us, and a lot of the priests were from overseas. When we went to our refectory for our dinner, lunch, and breakfast, we had to carry our own plates back to the kitchen area to be washed. Some of the senior boys were asked to wash their own plates. The smaller boys from the small dorm were actually made to clean the kitchen before we sat, oh, sorry, the dining area, before we sat down for lunch, dinner, and tea. Years later, when I decided to visit Bangalore, and I did this for many, many years. I left Bangalore in the late, early 60s, late 50s, and I visited quite a few times. What I noticed, a lot of very massive houses built along the roads in Bangalore. And I used to go walking around the parks, and I'll notice the owners of these very big houses cleaning out their houses and throwing the garbage over the wall. Could you believe it? One would imagine somebody living in a big house would accumulate his money by, first of all, getting some sort of education. Now, if educated people are throwing their garbage over the wall, they have very clean houses themselves, employing maids and servants and gardeners. But if they are throwing the garbage over the wall, how educated are these so-called rich people? One has got to ask themselves. So my message Toastmaster of the day, or oh sorry, Table Topics Master, is to first of all, educate the people. As one of your speakers said, get the government not to accumulate money or wealth by encouraging the use of garbage being thrown on the streets. Somebody is making money out of it. The other thing that has got to stop is that the Western nations are sending their garbage over to the poorer countries to be processed. Bangladesh is receiving a lot of ships that have got to be decommissioned the ships are being rammed onto the beaches, and then there are hordes of people decommissioning these, these ships. Now, we have got to get better educated, both in the West and the greedy people in the developing countries to stop making money on garbage. So back to you, Table Topics Master. Thank you. 
Thank you, Brian, for your views. And good to know how beautiful your own city was there in the 1960s. <laughs> so Toastmaster Day, do I have a couple of minutes? Is the time over? Yes, we can have one more. Oh. So who is the next passionate speaker who wants to just go ahead? The floor is open. Anyone volunteering? So should I ask Sushma? She's smiling. Go ahead. Go ahead. Please, please. <laughs> I'm not, I might not. I'll try, sir. I'll try, try, because you're also a true Bangalorean. So you know the pulse of Bangalore and the pains of Bangalore. So over to you. Uh, sir, can you please, uh, you, you want me to just uh, talk about... Okay. So you can pick up any topic on this uh, garbage issue which we have. They say one of the magic mantra for that is three hours. Reduce, okay. Reuse, reuse uh, or recycle. You can pick up anything or any, all three, your choice is yours. Or any other new ideas? Yeah, like um, when we came to Bangalore in 1995, it was not like this, how it was, uh, it was very green. And I, I mean, it is all, everyone knows about that, how green and how chill it was. Um, it was, Bangalore was not planned for this kind of a growth. Nobody would have imagined that we are going to see this massive growth in terms of like uh, even um, all villages, um, Sarjapur also going to um, I mean, become one more area or um, when I got I mean, in 1998 Marathalli was only like uh, Marathalli and Whitefield was only uh, not crowded. So uh, that is the one thing it was not planned and they were not ready for this kind of a growth. Another thing is so that time since the crowd was not this massive we could, I mean, they could manage, BPMP could manage well garbage heaps or whatever. I have not seen any garbage, such a heap of garbages earlier. Whereas now we see um, uh, South Bangalore and the North Bangalore, still South Bangalore, it is very cleaner and clean area. I don't see many garbage heaps, uh, how I see in North Bangalore. And uh, still it is, uh, for me, uh, one question always wanders in my mind, why they don't uh, maintain uh, bins? Because since there are no bins and all, just people are just throwing. See, that time since it was not crowded, maybe that, that worked for them without any placing any garbage bins. But now since it is a massive growth and um, it is Silicon City of our India, uh, they have to think of, uh, they have to think over that. They cannot stick on to that. No BBMP rule is against placing bins and all. They cannot stick to the old rules only. So that is the one thing which always um, uh, wonders why they don't uh, uh, adapt this kind of change when the growth is happening massively. So uh, this is the thing. Yes, I'm very happy to see that whatever the growth is happening, whatever the changes are happening in my area, I'm very happy for that. Uh, kudos to you as well for contributing for such development and growth, sir. Over to you, Table Topics Master. Thank you. Thank you, Master Sushma, for your kind words and giving the new thought process. So, Vidhu, where well, are we on time? One more or that's all? I think so, I don't think we have enough time. I think we are. We have to go to the next segment. Okay, great. Thank you. So, this was a good point. Everyone came with a novel idea. Brian, talked, Brian as well as Abhilash talked about start from the home, educate yourself. When the rich people, they have so much of garbage, they just dump out. And that's exactly what is happening. We collectively as Bangaloreans make 4,500 garbage per day. And all that is all the way one kilometers, 50 kilometers and dump it into nearby village and to open quarries and spoil the farmlands over there. So all that it is, that is the way it is handled. So that is not the solution. So there are something which we have to think ourselves internally and this magic R principle, reduce, reuse and recycle can take care because that word which I caught my attention was 
consumerism because a lot of things we buy without having a shopping list nowadays we go to mall just to relax and buy whatever is available not necessarily we actually require that and thanks to covid now everything even food you can order online and the food comes in whenever you can those packs becomes a big garbage disposal challenges so that is also there and as i promised to you i'll be sharing on that window the invitation for each one of you to participate in and do with the active audience to attend this session coming sunday 23rd of january india time 6:30 so with this over to the toast master of the day toast master bidu thank you table topic master toastmaster smelvin for this interesting choice of topic it is always the cumulative effort that is required to make a change of that skill when it comes to environment or garbage reduce reuse recycle i believe these are rr should happen now with immediate effect even if the movie rrr is postponed indefinitely and the speakers who were equally confident and wonderful in delivering the table topics it was great to know toastmasters brand who had his origins in bangalore and how passionate he still is about the city and of course the rest of the speakers who live in bangalore and how much they care for the city that they live in with this i would like to invite back our general evaluator to tell us how we all did in today's meeting over to you general evaluator saurav <clears throat> thank you so much uh, toastmaster bidu and uh, starting the general evaluation let us uh, first uh, let's have our speech evaluation the predictive evaluations and to evaluate the first speaker uh, toastmaster nitin uh, i would uh, invite toastmaster sushma may i request toastmaster uh, sushma and toastmaster nitin to be spotlighted please thank you toastmaster thank you ji yes uh, toastmaster nitin your title is very catchy and very curious i was very eager to know what kind of technology we are going to evident in our future you had a good start there is no doubt in that you are very enthusiastic to share whatever the study you have done and in delivering those um, um, facts instead of jumping into the topic also you have taken all of us to past and explain how technology evolved I mean, what was uh, how we were, and then how we are um, uh, getting benefited because of the technology. Uh, instead of jumping, that is also a very nice thing. And you had a good vocal variety as also. You, you you did not have any nervousness. Of course, you were very you were not nervous any time also uh, from the first speech uh, itself. And you did well. Re you did good research on that. Um, explained. what kind of uh, technology we are going to evident in 52 in 50 to 100 years that means you have worked well on that topic when it comes to recommendations i have few high contact like uh, i mean you were seeing sometimes up down and then side views maybe you have to adjust your camera to your eye level and so that you need to work on that thing and you have used hand gestures but throughout i could not see few hand gestures of yours uh, had you if you can work on that part also then uh, it will be uh, very engaging uh, so that is that one uh, you that one you need to implement that and since it is the technology related uh you have show, you have explained how it was passed and then uh, how how what kind of technology how the technology is going to evolve you have mentioned very clearly it was very exciting also knowing that uh, with regards to technology we are going to evident that kind had you you have mentioned very well had you showed through ppt those ones it would have been very engaging to audience because we were uh, very curious to know i mean you just explained well but uh, had it shown through ppt it would have been more engaging so that one uh, that is the one you could have uh, done it in next speech you can uh, implement that and when it comes to vocal variety it was very clear you were very comfortable throughout your speech 
since you are uh, saying very curious ones like new technology um, with regards to health and with regards to um, I mean, uh, how it is going to ease uh, with regards to commute level also uh, with little bit of excitement and uh, if you had you shown in your expressions uh, it would have been uh, more uh, attractive and uh, so impressive that is the one and and otherwise you could have asked um, i mean you can do this also a question by asking a question to audience you want to know what kind of technology you are going to evident so um, uh, that way also um, that question you can implement uh, so uh, overall it was a wonderful speech and one more just a small recommendation uh, source i mean uh, you have worked very well did well research um, source had you mentioned from where what was the source from which source you have taken those interesting facts so that you uh, know audience if they want to uh, go and research also it would have been benefited for them uh, since it is very interesting uh, so this the, when it comes to recommendations these are the few ones and overall i have enjoyed with regards to technology yes um, uh, we because yes we are very grateful and thankful to the technology because of that only we are going to learn many things we are learning uh, all the best for your future speeches toastmas over to you general evaluator thank you so much uh, toastmaster shushma i reserve my comments uh, i'll first have the second uh, project evaluation done so to evaluate the second speaker we have our evaluator toastmaster deepa uh, toastmaster deepa and toastmaster jaya may please be spotlighted thank you thank you general evaluator toastmaster saurav toastmaster jaya you know as i listen to your project and story all i could think of was how i wish i had a teacher like tanvi and janvi in my life so that my mathematics was becoming mathematic like you said let me tell you what really impressed me about your speech the use the play of words your rich vocabulary i mean petricor wafted the title itself bits and beyond the places where you use parallel paradoxes two extremes two families one teacher you are very good at words and i really appreciate you for that I also appreciate the opening where you began with rain, rain. You know the catchy words that I think as a child even I used. Uh, it was it drew the attention to you, and also the props that you came up with in between the teacup and the uh, patterns and some of them. They they were very effective. I also like the descriptive words as you used your descriptive words like it was raining. The boy shivered. we uh, tanvi and janvi came in colorful clothes i could pictureize the scene and uh, and i congratulate you for doing that as well uh, i also like the expression in your voice you know as in you said rohan's voice shivered we could feel the shiver in the word shiver so that's also one of your strong points now to swasha jaya we are here at toastmasters to continually learn and improve ourselves So this is these are things that i'd like you to consider the first one is through the speech every speech has a message every speech is persuading us to go a certain path what is it that you wanted us as an audience to take away with ourselves i knew it was your story in a way but how about coming out from that cryptic message there was a lot of cryptic messages in your speech i wish it was made a little more clearer towards the conclusion maybe taken us as an audience along with you and given us directly in a slightly direct way uh, as to what you want us to do with this story i mean the teacher has done this that you know in 100 years nobody will remember me all of this is fine how what is it that you want the audience to remember the speech by two days up after the speech one week after the speech we want to remember the speech what is it that we want to take away from it i'd like you to consider that and the second thing was about um using body language and gestures to your you effectiveness to amplify the effectiveness of speech um i think you can work by trying to 
free your hand and try to allow it to move where it has to move. And the other thing is, let me suggest you an exact, a specific where you could have used. You mentioned that Tanvi and Janvi came in colorful clothes, right? I felt you could have used your eyes, which is again, uh, 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 eye contact by showing, but maybe telling Rohan and uh, the other character, just they just looked at the teachers, Tanvi and Janvi come in, coming with their colorful clothes. If you just looked at them, we could again picturize the scene very effectively. So just by the movement of yourself, we could use body language. That said, great speech, great story, good pre offers, keep them up, keep the uh, catchy phrases, descriptive words and expression in your voice, a little work on the body language and the message and the speech is gonna to go to the next level. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Deepa. So uh, here's uh, a few observation on the speaker, the first speaker and the first, the, the speakers and the evaluators. So uh, first of all, I would want to congratulate both the evaluators for doing a beautiful job in terms of stating the project objectives. I don't know why I'm seeing this uh, very often uh, in more, many Toastmaster meetings is that people are not reading the project, project objectives from uh, the project objective guidelines, evaluation resource, and they're trying to do their own interpretation and play of words. I understand, uh, you know, we are trying to be original, but let's understand that uh, the speaker gets confused when you end up saying something uh, which uh, that person was not prepared for. So you read it from the project objective. The other good thing, and I'm not surprised this is a Toastmaster Club of Pros, so, and you're doing it so well, is that no one mentioned that our speaker today, Toastmaster Nitin, or a speaker today, Toastmaster Jaya, right? You talked about our target speaker, and this is important. Why is this important? It's just not a very minor technical thing. It's important because Toastmaster Evaluation Resource very clearly mentions that we should be focusing on the speech and not the speaker. So the moment you say that our speaker today, DTM Millen, it's like, you know, he, oh, DTM Millen, so he has to be a great speaker. So what's there to even evaluate, right? So I think um, that that uh, mental block comes in, which we call also the horns and hello effect. So uh, I think that's a very good job done by both the evaluators in terms of stating the project objectives. Now let me come to the speech and the evaluation. So the first speaker, I think a fully loaded speech, I think a lot of things were there. Uh, you know, we talked about artificial intelligence, you talked about, um, you talked about robots, you talked about virtual reality. Um, I was expecting somebody to also talk about blockchain. Now the problem uh, with uh, this kind of a speech is that you also have to be mindful of the audience that you have, right? So I understand you are extremely informed on this particular subject, but it is also important for you to be empathetic about how much the audience can take in. See, a speech is not about how much I know, but it is about like, um, you know, as our second evaluator said, uh, what is the key message that you want to give out? And the key message I heard at the end is that, uh, don't criticize those who love technology. I would also say that let's be empathetic towards those who don't understand technology, right? There are lots of people around us who don't even know how to use a mobile phone or a computer. And um, I, I really feel bad uh, when I see them struggling in a Toastmasters Club meeting. They don't know where to find the unmute button. They don't know how to, you know, we so normally say, go and pin the timer, right? That person doesn't even know how to pin the timer. Those challenges are real. And uh, let's let's be uh, acceptance or ac uh, you know let's have an acceptance towards that. Um, one small uh, thing also is about um, the one second. So one thing you mentioned is about uh, yeah. So it's a very small one, but I think it's a very <laughs> there's a very common error that we make is uh, mention Xerox, right? So Xerox is a brand name. It's not the actual word is photocopy. So um, it's it's detergent and not luck uh, and not uh, what wheel or whatever it is. So be mindful. Xerox is a brand name. So what you wanted to use is the word is photocopy. So such small small things we have to be a little mindful about when you're speaking. Now coming to the first evaluator, I think your style was motivational, and um, you tried to encourage the speaker through a good part of your evaluation. I felt that you were actually summarizing the speech and not really evaluating the speech. So there's a very thin line between summarizing and evaluating. So uh, please understand, you may draw instances from the speech to explain why is it a good thing to do, but then we will also have to know that where to stop and move over to the commendation or the recommendation. So a structure that I normally follow is the what, why, and how. So what did you observe? Why is that important? And how did you do it? Which is in case of commendations. And in case of recommendations, what did you observe? 
why is it important and how should you do it so if you use this structure it's easy it's it's a little easier not to fall in the trap of summarizing and stick to evaluations now coming to our second evaluator toastmaster uh, deepa what should i say i mean i learned evaluation from you so uh, you are you know you are my dronacharya and i am your ekalavya so so kind of you never ask for my thumb so uh, now the thing here is that uh, toastmaster deepa i think um, ka, you know uh, your your style is always inspirational i've seen that and you did call out uh, uh, some very good points around gestures and body language just one thing i would say is that um, many a times you know we tell the uh, so one of the things about recommendations is it's not about what should be done but also what the speaker is able to do right so there is always a natural limitation that we have as a speaker so many a times people have told me that you know you look at this person and then you talk like you were talking to your mom and mom replies back with you you know sometimes we get conscious some of us are conscious we may not do it naturally it may come very naturally to you so are you telling me that if i am not good at doing these role plays i should not be coming on stage in toastmasters i don't think that's the message right so i think whenever we give such recommendations uh, which are a little difficult for people to do it is good to add at the end that if it is possible or try doing this you know you such gentle words rather than saying that you should be doing this because then i would be like okay if i can't do this then i may rather not do this right so just just to avoid that toastmaster jaya i don't know how the evaluator men forgot mentioning this but the best thing that stood out in your speech is your voice for me you know you have a mesmerizing voice a very very powerful voice and um, that is something that is uh, you know that that there's going to linger in my mind for a very long time after you complete your speech now if there's one thing one feedback i would give you apart from what postmaster deep has already mentioned about gestures and verbal etc is here you're not a teacher so you can smile you can smile more right the entire speech it was i don't know if you were tensed or if if the teacher in you was kind of overwhelming or overpowering the speaker in you but somewhere i felt that you were not smiling at all and if uh, well deepa would have loved to have you as a teacher and so would i but then somewhere i'll be also very scared of you right if that is the you know there is something about you which is scaring me also so you yeah, see you have got a beautiful smile so we sh you should smile more often when you come on camera this is the feedback that i got most of the time when i was on the stage right so i'm just kind of passing it on okay so thank you so much uh, may we have a big round of applause for the speakers and the evaluators for a fantastic job done thank you let me now invite my tagel team and uh, the first member on the tagel team toastmaster adarsh krishna timer for today thank you toastmaster saurav i'm going to go ahead and present my report as a timer for today it was my job to keep track of all of your table topics and speeches and i must note that i'm slightly disappointed but at the same time i'm happy that some of you were able to stay within the time frame that was stated i'm going to start off with ddm melan he was the sa today and he spoke for around two and a half minutes although he was a lot for around two minutes so that counts as a disqualification in my note our presiding officer toastmaster joseph felix benedict stuck with stuck stuck with the time of around four minutes as given to him so kudos to him and i think that's something that all of us must learn from as for our table top as for our joke master for today toastmaster deepa spoke for around two minutes and 30 seconds which is all right but she was a lot around two minutes and i raised red card at that precise time so that you'll be able to find out regardless i'm going to move to our upcoming i'm going to move to toastmaster of the day toastmaster bidu toastmaster bidu had so much content he had way too much content and he spoke for around 6 minutes and 5 seconds i think it'd be good if you can reduce the number of filler content so that you stick in the time of 5 minutes it was provided to you that was my suggestion as for our speakers our speakers did a wonderful job in sticking to the time of around 7 minutes toastmaster nithin had uh, took around 6 minutes and 12 seconds while toastmaster jaya took around 6 minutes and 55 seconds she was so close to touching the red card i was so close to displaying the red card but then she just stopped herself and thought you know what i'm about to, i'm, I'm going to go beyond the time that is given to me i'm going to move to our table topic master for today and i only have one so that you stick with the time that's given to you of around 15 minutes you took around 26 minutes of course it was brilliant reduce reuse and recycle but it's also important for you to reduce reuse and recycle the time that's given to you of around 26 around 15 minutes but regardless great job i'll move on to our table topic speakers toastmaster abilash who took around 2 minutes and 30 seconds 
Toastmaster Selva Kumar took around two minutes and eight seconds. Toastmaster Deepa took around two minutes and 20 seconds. Toastmaster Brian took around four minutes and five seconds. I think that is probably where the issue was, but I think Toastmaster Brian was probably joining from his phone and he was not able to pin me as a result, but I would suggest him to do so the next time if possible. If not, we'd be more than happy to guide you. Regardless, it was a wonderful deep topic. Toastmaster Shushma took around two minutes and 37 seconds. So overall, there were very few disqualifications, but we have certain areas where we can improve and we can do that by reducing the amount of content we use as part of our report. On that note, I'd like to hand it back to our Toastmaster General Evaluator, Toastmaster Saurav. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Adarsh. Uh, I've never seen a timer make anyone smile, you know. You're... You could, uh, you could take up engaging humor as your pathway. I'm inspiring a lot of people nowadays because I have taken that up and I'm regretting big time. So uh, you could probably try it uh, because you've got a natural sense of humor. Great job. Okay, let me now call in our R counter, Toastmaster Akanksha Srivastava for presenting the R counter report. Uh, or let me, let me do this Akanksha since you're also the listener. Probably we can first save some time. I'll first call in the grammarian and then I'll call the R counter and the listener. You can do it both together. Okay, can I invite Toastmaster Brian Edwards, our grammarian for today, to present his report? Thank you, General Evaluator. As I mentioned earlier on, the grammarian is to try to pick out the good syllables, the good words, the good sentences, but also point out areas where we could improve. Now, I do appreciate that in a lot of the 13 or so different languages in India, the R is very much pronounced. When you speak in English, try to ease off on the R's. Don't mention things like garb, things like robots. It's ro not robot, not robot. It's robot, not robot. Also your W's and your V's you tend to get that very, very confused. For example, W-H-E-R-E -E is where, not there. When you're saying serve, S-E-R-V-E, -E, it's not serve, okay? Also, purpose, it's not purpose. Try to ease off on that. Some of the good words that have come out of the meeting, amplify specifically catchy phrases play on words evaluation inspirational that's good so when you're speaking in english particularly if you're giving a speech be aware of diction pronunciation i was pointed this out when i first came to england many many years as a young boy and as a result of that i'm very conscious when I'm using sentences and words. In fact, recently we had a contest over here and I represented my club. Now being an Indian to represent an English club, I think it's a feather in the hat for all Indians, okay? So do try and improve on that and good luck to you all. Great evaluations. I'm glad to be here. Hopefully join you again. Back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Brian. And um, I guess there were no usage of the words of word of the day, right? No, I I didn't hear many people use it. I don't know anybody else. <laughs> Thank you. Perhaps it was a bit. They were all trying to be too humble. I don't know. <laughs> yes, what we found humility not so humble enough. Okay. <laughs> So uh, let me move on to our R counter and the listener. So Akanksha, you can play the role. Uh, you can give a report uh, consecutively, one after the other. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Ji. I will present my R counter report first. I will start sharing my screen. Uh, OK, just a second. So when the meeting started, and it halfway till the to table topics point, I felt that I will have no such words used. And I was feeling humbled because there was nothing that I was going to report, but there were few usages which are visible here in the report. And I would like to call upon five speakers who did not use crutch words or who used it very minimally. It's DDM Millen. Toastmaster Joseph, Toastmaster Adarsh, Toastmaster Brian Edwards, and Toastmaster Jaya. 
a big applause for all of you for not using any crutch words and we can all look up to them and learn from them how they avoided using these crutch words. For the rest of us, the report is here. You can look at it at the usage. As you can see, the filler sounds were used most during our meeting and uh, there were 21 filler sounds and your individual report is here. I will share it in the chat. Now, coming to special pointers and suggestions for uh, people. So DDM Millen, DDM Joseph, they used the pauses effectively and that's how they avoided the crutch words. For Toastmaster Deepa, she used um and ah uh during transition of ideas and when she was thinking of points. So maybe a pause would help her. For Toastmaster Vidu, he had one usage of um, and he used it uh, by calling out the name. So pause again would have helped. Toastmaster Nitin again used uh, transition of uh, ideas, used so during transition of ideas. And if he had words ready like therefore, because, and used them instead of so, it would have avoided the repetition. And for our table topic speakers, they were a little fast. So what I would suggest is you can breathe and that will help you slow down a bit and help you use the, uh, not use the crutch words. So this is basically my suggestion over here to avoid using the crutch words. Now I will stop screen sharing and I will start playing the listener role. So, I have my questions ready. Hope all of you are ready to answer. Now, who is on the quest to self-improvement? Who amongst us is on the quest to self-improvement and join speech weavers for that? We do. Yes. One point to Toastmaster Deepa and who stitches the uniform of the kids and grandkids? Joseph, sir. Mr. Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And who is an educator by choice? Not Jaya. Yeah, you're correct, Toastmaster Deepa. What were the three things that Toastmaster Brian was going to judge us on as a grammarian? Enunciation, diction, and enunciation. 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 Yeah, pronunciation. So Toastmaster Deepa, you are a great listener that shows that. And Toastmaster Sushma, you're also doing great. And who described their first meeting as comedy of errors? It was the first huh? It was general evaluator's first meeting. In yes, Toastmaster Vidu, you are correct. And you are in the game now. And who gave us the cardinal principles of Toastmaster's meetings? DTML. Yes, he did. Are, which countries are developing flying cars? Japan and Korea. Japan. <laughs> what is a metaverse? Living in the virtual world, yeah, uh, where even marriage uh, functions are happening and we can play characters. Yeah, you can have your own avatars there and they can, yes. So who cleaned his dishes in school? Yes, Master Brian. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> and... What is Bangalore being called since 2016? Silicon City? No, no, no. <laughs> 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 city. <laughs> that was my last question. And Toastmaster Deepa, Toastmaster Shushma, Toastmaster Vidu, thank you for answering. Over to you, GE. Thank you so much. Uh... Yes, I now have the right to share my screen. <clears throat> so um, here's my G report. So in terms of the pre-meeting, um, I think uh, the meeting goals were filled up well in advance uh, and everything was done very well. 
Um, the meeting poster was appropriate. I think there are all greens here. There's nothing much. In fact, one thing I would want to really commend is that I went back and checked your Facebook page and uh, looks like you're one of those very rare clubs who actually put their uh, latest meeting posters on the Facebook page. So good job with that. Thank you. Um, so there was one dropout, uh, but I think uh, it was quickly managed by the uh, by the meeting planners. I think it's very normal nowadays with the kind of situation that we're in. The meeting did start on time. Uh, there were meeting pre meeting checks. As they said, oh, the guests were welcome. I think no no uh, comments or reservations there. Uh, all kind of, uh, the speaker and the evaluator. Can we just mute uh, everyone? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so one of the things, uh, DTM Milan, I would have loved to uh, see is that particularly because there were guests today, is that to explain the table topics purpose, uh, because uh, I think you straight away dived into the topic and it was a pretty serious topic. So, um, you know, uh, that's something that you could have done because there are guests there who don't know the format of table topics or what is the importance of it. So uh, my, my uh, suggestion is to always uh, explain also connecting back to the real life because a lot of people feel that table topics is only for Toastmasters. We don't realize that every time someone tells you, tell me something about yourself, there's nothing but a table topic, right? And uh, you have to decide based on who are you talking to that what will I say about myself? So I think that's a new table topic. Every time we do for a simple question, like tell me something about yourself. What do you do? Who are you? Can you introduce yourself? And this happens in so many forums, right? Not only Toastmasters. So I think that is something that you can consider. Um, one thing I really liked about the session today is that there was one common topic and it went across for all the speakers. So it was like more in a contest mode without the contest pressure, right? So that gave everyone a chance to speak on the same topic and everyone thought that, okay, what did the previous speaker say and what more can I say? So this is one luxury that we don't have in the contests. We have ace contestants here and we know, and they know that, that in table topic, this is exactly what happens. But I think this is a good way of doing a topic because then the guests feel more energized. The other thing is that the topics that you choose were related to something which we are all very passionate about, we can relate to. I mean, the moment we step out of the house, our immediate reaction is chichi etta janjal, right? So I think that is something that we all uh, abhor and we also contribute to it. So great job with the selections of the topic. Um, I think nothing, uh, no observations, particularly on the uh, tag team role players. Now let me uh, give my observations about the meeting. I think, um, first of all, I would really want to con uh, you know, uh, congratulate our grammarian, the way you explained uh, the enunciation, the pronunciation and the diction part, I think it was very important. And the choice of the word of the day, humility and the narrative that came along with it, that's so timely. I mean, today's world needs a constant reminder that it, it is important to stay humble and stay grounded no matter how much of an achievement you have in your life. And there's something that we are forgetting. You know, we keep on bragging and boasting so much that it's becoming so nauseating uh, for a lot of people. So thank you uh, for, for that very uh, subtle reminder on that one. And I already talked about the G, uh, the, uh, sorry, the evaluators about reading out the speech objectives. Now, uh, one thing uh, on the technical side, what I found is that uh, the meeting, um, uh, you know, um, the the mute was uh, becoming a bit of a problem. Time and again, when the first speaker was speaking, there was a background noise. And uh, let's remember for the speaker, these five minutes is very important. And, uh, uh, you know, any kind of distraction could be very unsettling. So whoever was managing the audio settings will have to be a little bit more mindful. Probably have the option of not uh, allowing others to unmute when someone is speaking and keep on toggling a bit with that option. So that's one. The other thing is in terms of, uh, you know, punctuality. So punctuality is not about uh, just uh, starting the meeting on time. It's also about ending the meeting on time. And I think it's pretty obvious that we have not done a good job with that. So why, why is it so? So there are two reasons for it. So one is that every role player has to be mindful. And in this case, it really did not happen because when I got the stage, I should have got the stage at 612 as a general evaluator. I got the stage at 632. So I really got the stage 20 minutes after the scheduled time. So uh, me and my team, uh, the evaluators and the tag team will not take the blame of, uh, you know, overshooting on time. Uh, so I pass it on to the role players before me. But there is one more important mess here, which is if you look carefully at the agenda, you will find that the agenda has a little bit of a problem. So you are saying that, um, you know, the first evaluator will come at six and will finish at six, three. So you're assuming there will be no overshooting of time. That's fine. That's being good optimistic. But you're saying that the second evaluator will come at 6.3, which means it's like a touch and go, right? Like Sushma will speak and then immediately Deepa starts and then immediately the tag team. It doesn't happen like that, right? I have to introduce these people. They have to come in. I have to give my comments. So where is that space? 
So between each of these role players, you have to keep at least a 30 seconds buffer, right? Otherwise, when will I introduce them? How will they come in? They have a settling time as well, right? So it's so these are something that you have to factor in. And then they will have this problem of please mute me, please unmute me, please give me screen share rights. So factor in this one, have a little bit of buffer in the agenda. If necessary, keep the agenda light. Keep the number of table topics uh, a little less. Uh, maybe have one speaker or two speaker or short speeches, whatever works out for your club. Look at whether you need both the joke master or the, and the listener. So some of these things take into consideration and plan the agenda well. I can guarantee you the meeting will end on time and you'll be bang on in terms of time. Thank you. And everything else, perfect. Thank you, speech viewers, for this opportunity. And back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you so much. And to everyone who were with us today, I had a wonderful time hosting all of you. Lots of learning and insights. And I hope all of you had a good time too. With this, I would sign off and I would invite back our president, Toastmasters Joseph, sir. Thank you, Toastmaster Vidu, for the wonderful conducting of the entire meeting. One thing I would like to say is, somebody has said a long time ago, time is money. That still it is really, a gift, but he did not receive Nobel Prize. Perhaps Alfred Nobel was not born before him. However, I thank every one of you, the Toastmasters and their participants, role takers, and all those who have done a wonderful job. A special thanks to Sauro Toastmaster, who is the area director, was kind enough to come as a general evaluator in spite of his busy schedule. Thank you so much, sir. And also I applaud all the people who are really participated and given a great opportunity to fulfill this meeting's uh, purpose and the educational value that is seen in their speeches as well as in the evaluators. This is a great honor for me to have such per persons in my club as a speech viewers club and I really hats off to them. Now I have to thank all those visitors for especially Chin Pai, uh, Toastmaster Brian and uh, Abhilash, Selva Kumar, they have taken part in the in the Toastmaster of the I can say the table topic and other things, and I really enjoyed the meeting. I hope, and I would like to have them their appraisal towards the meeting today. I will ask them later. I will also have an announcement to make, but before that, I would like to see if there is any uh, voting list on this meeting. I want to know. Yes, sir, the voting link has been put up in the chat. Please go ahead and vote for your favorite role takers and speakers, and we'll announce the winners very soon. All right, we have around nine votes. There are around 16 people in the room. So I'd, I'd urge the other seven people to vote for their favorite table topic speakers and prepared speeches. Fine, then we have around nine responses. I'm not going to take more time than this. I'm just going to go ahead and announce the winners for today. All right. For the best supporting role taker, we have Toastmaster DTM Milan, sir, as the winner for today. My apologies. I actually started off by saying Toastmaster. So it actually made it seem like DTM Milan wasn't the winner. But yes, he was the winner for the best supporting role taker. For the best role taker, we have our general evaluator. Toastmaster Saurav, he is the winner for today. Congratulations, Toastmaster Saurav. Please coming back. Please keep coming back to Speech Fever's Toastmaster Club. For the best evaluator, we have 
Toastmaster Deepa. Toastmaster Deepa was our best evaluator today. For the best prepared speaker, well, this is slightly split, but we'll find out who the winner is in a moment. The winner is Toastmaster Jaya. Toastmaster Jaya, thank you very much for joining us today and congratulations. That was an exquisite speech. For the best auxiliary role taker, well, this is sort of split. I think as a matter of fact, it's even. It is me, Toastmaster Adush, and the other winner is Toastmaster Akansha. Toastmaster Akansha, one is the best auxiliary role taker and this is for her role as the accounter. It was a very comprehensive report, by the way. For the best table topic speaker, well, I see so many colors on my screen right now that I'm finding it very hard to find who the winner is. Let's see who the winner is. The winner is Toastmaster Brian. Toastmaster Brian, you were the best table topic speaker today. And for second, we had Toastmaster Deepa who came very, very close to winning it, but it's gonna to go to Toastmaster Brian. Thank you very much. And that was it, that, that's, that's it as, that was me as the vote master today. I couldn't quite, I cannot quite believe that we saw some excellent speeches and table topics. On that note, I'd like to hand it back to our presiding officer, Toastmaster Joseph. Thank you, others, and uh, congratulations to all the winners of this day. I have an announcement uh, to make. Our next meeting is going to be a very milestone meeting. It's a 650, I think. Yeah, 650. We are going to invite a great orator and a champion speaker. He is no other than Thomas Vegas. We are going to have him in our next meeting as a keynote speaker. All are welcome and also to listen to him to get the takeaway from him because of the eminency that he had. Now again, uh, what I would like to say is, I would like to ask some of our guests like Chin Pai, that she has any experience, any change or any good thing in this meeting. Can she answer that? Is Chinpai available? So, President, sir, uh, she would share the feedback in our chat box. Okay. Now, I would like to ask Mr. Abhilash about this meeting. Mr. Abhilash. Good evening. Hope you remember me. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, you can Joseph. go ahead. Hey, Joseph, sir. Good evening. Good so, evening. this is the first time. Uh, yeah, yeah, sir. So, this is the first online meeting I'm attending for Toastmasters. Um, I think uh, I was at WeWork years, years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it's a different experience because what are we done in life? So we are doing through online. So, it's cool that. I keep getting the feedback. I mean, that uh, follow-up message, emails from speech papers, even I left. So that was the right follow-up. <laughs> I'm thanking the PR of this club. What is it, that uh, technical word you used to say? Like uh, the guy who promote, I don't remember that word. He's PR, right? VP, uh, VPR, something like that. I don't remember that word. Fine, cool. So it's a very nice meeting. I really enjoyed it. So, uh, Nothing else. I have nothing else to speak after this. Uh, but there are uh, kind of uh, timing because internet is not stable. It's there because we are running in online. So there are things we there we have to manage. Cool. Thank you. 
Hey Deepa, thanks, thanks. Okay, that's very kind of you, Abhilash, for getting the good experience from our meeting. Is Selva Kumar has anything to say? Selva hey, Kumar. Jasur, sir. Yep. Hope I'm audible. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's fantastic time. Uh, yeah, it's after all, it's, it's, it's something like, uh, I, I've been joined like 10, 15 minutes late, but you know, uh, the first good point is you yeah, picked my name and you know, I, I think I, I captured by, uh, I couldn't remember the name, then they initially itself, you know, they told we are going to nominate you for table topic. So that's something, you know, <laughs> that's a good one because usually t- table topic, they will, you know, come and pick, right? So that's a, something that you were given me a task so that, I don't have, I can't say any excuses to go out because I've been told to toss part of something like table topic, I will participate. It doesn't mean, no, I, because being a guest, I can go or something, but I don't have any responsibility, but it, it tied me like I have to sit and then made my day. So that's a, you know, good, a bit, bit you know, uh, different I experienced. And the second thing about the table topic where he bought that, you know, very nature and demanded for the day and then make that, it kind of, you know, we are not, you know, I, especially I'm not feeling like that kind of impromptu speech that comes out of like our social speech, something we have to do. So that's a very good way of um, maybe, you know, uh, I, I, I feel that that's a very comfortable way. And also the suggestions as uh, now I'm, I can you know, talk very patiently while giving a topic, it was a bit faster uh, <laughs> that yes, I, I observed, <laughs> yes, I will take the corrective actions and the thanks for uh, my ice, kind of uh, icebreakers, icebreaker session today for me. Thanks. Thank you, Selva Kumar. That is a very kind of you to give you all your experience. And I also received from the chat uh, the Chin Pai's message. Thank you so much for it. Now it is time for me to <coughs> close the meeting. Meeting number 649 is adjourned. Thanks, everyone.